Commander, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Hardly, but I can see the big picture. A big picture that includes me as the immortal ruler of Velika. <laughs> Today I am reviewing Terra. It's been out for a week now and I've got to level 38, so it's probably about time I gave you my views. As always, I shall begin where I always do with my full reviews, widescreen and multi-monitor support. Don't you see, Samael? The Argons are trying to turn us against each other. Of course they are. That's good strategy. But you think too small. Widescreen and multi-monitor support are extremely good. All resolutions are available in the options menu from the get-go, with no tweaking required. Pre-rendered cutscenes render to their correct aspect ratio, and in-game cutscenes render horizontal plus as well. In-game also renders horizontal plus, with the user interface having a fair degree of customization. Which is good, because you'll probably want to move the default locations of some of the elements, but moving them is just a matter of entering UI mode and clicking and dragging. Resizing is a little trickier, as this has to be done via the options menu, but there are still options there to do it, so it's good enough for me. The net result is the game gets an A grade from the widescreen gaming forum for both its widescreen and multi-monitor support, since it has full support in both. This makes it a widescreen gaming forum certificated game. The game itself is an Eastern MMORPG, with the visual style reflecting this. The graphics are sharp and use a vibrant colour palette. The textures look good for the most part, but some lack the detail when viewed closed up. The levels are generally well constructed and extremely varied, ranging from a lush fantasy forest, to wide open plains, to desert ruins. NPC designs range massively from things that all look familiar to things that look like they were pulled clean out of someone's nightmare. Overall, the visual style of the game fits well together, and it does a good job of bringing the world to life. I won't go into detail about the player character design, I'll just say that if you know much about the Eastern culture and MMOs, you'll probably know what to expect. Whether it bothers you or not will come down to a matter of personal taste and how much you can accept the cultural differences. For me, it's a non-issue. That said, the Western version of the game have been toned down a lot, and the EU version of the game has even removed a lot of the blood effects to get a PG-12 rating. However, this is being put back in after the patch that should be released sometime after this video. The game's audio adds to the aesthetic nicely. The music changes depending on the strength of the monster you're fighting, as well as the area you're in, and the sound effects sound appropriate as well. There is voice acting in the game, but it's limited to NPC greetings and cutscenes. It's hit and miss, but the voice acting in the release version is a lot better than what was being used during the beta, which was laughable at points. That said, some of it still is. The game has a number of stories to tell, from the main overarching story to the mini ones found in each question area. Largely they're just fluff to help give the leveling quest meaning, and mostly those are delivered by way of text box. Some thought has been put into the main story, however, and uses cutscenes to help deliver it. That said, the majority of it is still presented by way of quest text, which, if you don't read, can make the cutscenes a little confusing as you'll be missing out some of the context. Now for what is the bulk of the game. It's gameplay. Terror is described as an action MMORPG. What this means is that your position, your aim, and most importantly your timing matter. The game does still bind skills to hotkeys, but there's not much you can do about that. No, what's important is that skills don't automatically hit regardless. Instead, you hit if you hit, or if you're a poor shot or the target gets out of the way in time, you'll miss. The whole system, when played right, makes the combat a whole lot more dynamic. Sure, you can still stand there and just mash buttons, but sooner or later you'll be punished for this approach. <laughs> The Holy Trinity is something I've been hearing a lot of recently. Terra apparently still has this trinity intact. There are two classes that can act as tanks, the Lancer and the Warrior, however despite 20% of the Head Start characters being warriors, I've yet to see a warrior fill this role. There are also two healer classes, the Priest and the Mystic, and then two melee and two long range damage demons, the Berserker, the Slayer, the Archer, and the Sorcerer. Each class plays slightly differently, although some of them do cross over a bit.
Besides the combat, the game maintains a lot of the trapping of most MMOs. The second you start, you'll see a large red floating exclamation mark indicating the NPC in front of you has something for you to do. Quests normally come under the kill X number of Y and or Z and then hand in. So it's a good thing that the combat system is a little more than just push 1, then push 2, then 3, then 4, etc. Because you'll be doing a lot of combat. Generally the grind isn't too bad, and I've played games with much, much worse grinding. The last thing to mention about the combat are bands, or big ass monsters. True to their name, these mobs come in sizes extra large to huge. Most BAMs are extremely powerful, and some can quite easily two hit some of the weaker classes. They're designed to be taken down in a group. That said, it is possible to solo them. Every class can solo a BAM, but it takes a lot of time, somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes, patience, a good understanding of the combat system, and extremely good timing. The game does have dungeons or instances, and they're largely what you'd expect from an MMORPG. In terror, the mobs inside are split between powerful regular-sized mobs to BAMs. Crafting and gathering largely follow the same sort of feel as other games. You train gathering by gathering from loads and crafting by crafting. Crafted items, although they can be expensive to make, normally appear to be better than dropped items of the same level or rarity. The game does have a couple of nice things in its gathering system though. Firstly, every time you successfully gather something, the game gives you a random buff. These buffs stack a number of times and can be quite useful. Also, the gathering system allows you to party gather where everybody in your party can gather from the same node at the same time, and everybody gets item and buffs from it. Last thing to mention is the game's endgame. Unfortunately, I've only had the chance to get to level 38, so the following information is second-hand. Largely, the current endgame consists of seven dungeons, three of which have hard modes, repeatable daily quests, battlegrounds for guilds to control areas of the map, and most interesting, a political system. The political system allows guild leaders to apply to be a Vanarch of one of the 15 provinces of the map. The Vanarch can set taxes in these areas, enable and disable special NPCs, and apparently turn PvP on and off. The next major patch should add more dungeons to the endgame, add rifts and raids, with the one after that including server versus server content. That covers most of it. The game is definitely worth playing if you like your MMOs, you do have to get to about level 15 or 20 before the game really starts getting into its stride, but it doesn't take long to get to that point. If you're not sure on MMOs, then I would say give it a try one way or the other. You'll definitely get more time out of terror than you would out of the single player most AAA games nowadays.